Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Foxy and this is Foxy Books and Planning. Today is my August monthly reading wrap up to see how much I've read, how much progress I've made, and what, if anyone is surprised, I haven't touched this month. Um, it is a shorter month. I did not do as much this month. I kind of hit a bit of a reading slump. Work picked up. It was harder to listen to audiobooks. I was kind of also taken over by a reading challenge I had given myself and I really need to get back on track with some of my things. So first up are the books I finished this month. There are only five which makes me sad especially after last month where I had 10 read so a significant decrease but the books were probably a little bit longer if I'm honest. Yeah, in general, the books I read this month were a little bit longer. So the first one, if I move my stack next to me, was The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. This is Corman Strike Book One. This is a book series that is ghost written by J.K. Rowling, or it's written under a pseudonym, however you want to think about it. Um, I tend to differ mentally differentiate this from J.K. Rowling because the writing style to me is slightly different or is different and I like the characters in this and I like the stories that are being told. Um, I know JK Rowling's a bit of a problematic author but I have had these books in some form since they've come out. Um, so and there is the fifth book in the series coming out in September which I have already pre-ordered and I'm super duper excited for. Um, so this was the first book. I gave this five stars with this one. It's your first introduction to Cormoran Strike and Robin Ellicott. Cormoran is a former special invas investigative branch detective for the military who has set up a private detective agency and he's kind of down on his luck when the brother of a childhood friend shows up asking him to solve the murder of his famous sister after the police and everyone have declared it a suicide. Robin shows up as his temporary um, secretary and mysteries unravel from there. Um, in terms of the Cormoran Strike series, this is probably my second favorite of the books so far. Actually, it is number two because there's only four books. So this is my second favorite of the books that are out now. Um, we'll see what happens when Troubled Blood comes out in September. Um, next up is the audiobook American Sherlock Murder Forensics and the Birth of American CSI by Kate Winkler Davis or Davies. Um, I gave it four stars. I had it as a library audiobook. This was one that was up for the Goodreads Best History um, for 2019. Um, it looks at the life of E.O. Heinrich, who was one of the first to kind of pioneer forensic techniques in the 20s and 30s. Um, part of, The main reason I gave this four stars was the way it was structured. Um, instead of it being a straight line through his life, we start with his most famous case, which happens to come at the end of his career, and then flash back to his childhood and then mark through when we come back to the most famous case at the end. It was a framing device that I'm fairly certain was intentional so that you would grab the reader and the reader would be kind of forced to keep reading because they want to know the outcome of that really famous case if they don't already know what the outcome is. I, about three quarters of the way through the book, and if you look at my Goodreads history on that, it'll even show like the, are we ever going to find out what happened to the lady in chapter one? So for me... The pacing was a little off. It was really interesting information. It was really informative. It was something that I had never heard of before. I had heard a lot about the chemists um, in the 20s and the 19 teens who were working for places like the FDA and the NIH and some of the other places who were sort of pioneering very early forensic techniques in order to detect things like cyanide and carbon monoxide and that kind of thing. But this was a guy I knew absolutely nothing about and was really interested to learn more. I would recommend this if you're a CSI fan or a true crime fan. Um, but in terms of a biography, it's it's much more it would be it's probably much more interesting to those who are into true crime and things like criminal. But nonetheless, I still did enjoy listening to it. 
Um, the next one, I do have a physical copy, um, which is Terry Pratchett's Mort. This is book four of Discworld or book one of the Death subseries within Discworld. Um, my spouse and I actually listened to this as an audiobook that he has during a short road trip that we had. Um, this is one that I would say, I've read it before, I really enjoy reading it. Um, it follows a boy named Mort or Mortimer who becomes Death's apprentice. Death decides he wants to get a taste for life, leaves Mort to do the job, and Mort messes up and things go awry. Um, this for me is probably the best starting place if you've never read Discworld before. I'd say start with this one and see if you like the writing style because it is a really short book. It's less than 300 pages. Um, but try this one first. If you like it, keep reading. Um, there are a bunch of different kind of reading orders that people suggest. I'm very much of the find the characters you like and follow them. Um, but highly, highly recommend this. It always gets five stars for me when I read it. All right, next is The Silkworm, which is book two of the Cormoran Strike Detective series by Robert Galbraith or J.K. Rowling. Um, this one was five stars as well. This one is the sequel to Cuckoo's Calling, obviously. It's my favorite of the series so far. In this one, um, a woman by the name of uh, Leonora Quine comes into the detective agency to ha ask Cormoran to help her find her husband who has been gone for a fortnight and the husband turns up murdered exactly the way the character in his latest novel is murdered. Um, so this one is my favorite because it's probably one of the most intricate of the murders that are the cases that happen in the various books. Um, and I like the unraveling. I like the interplay of the book within the book. I like the kind of the look at the literary culture of London. And I really, really like how Robin and Court and Strike's um, relationship is developed in this one. Also, I should say this was the first book of the series I read. I actually didn't realize it was part of a series until I read it and then was like, oh, I need to go back and read Cuckoo's Calling. But I really, really, really enjoy this one. Um, the last book I finished this month was called Nut Jobs Cracking California's Strangest Ten Million Dollar Heist by Mark Fresnel. This was an Audible original that was free either this month or last month. Don't quite remember exactly. I'm sure I'll leave myself a sarcastic note about it. I gave it three stars. Um, this is actually an Audible original podcast um, that's told in a very true crime way. But for me, the reason it gets three stars is it's really not a true crime novel. It's when you read it, it's like, okay, it's going to be a little true crime. We're going to be trying to figure out who actually stole these nuts and why they stole these nuts and go into more detail about how they did that. But that forms a very minor part of the store of this particular original. It focuses much more on um, California agriculture in the San Joaquin Valley and focusing on all the different things that affect the crops that grow there and why the crops that grow there are so critical to the current food supply and how people are trying to profit out of that current food out, out of that incredibly wealthy agricultural system and those who are not maybe profiting from that agricultural system i wanted more true crime is what came down to it i didn't particularly like the style um, of podcast where it was a lot of interviews where you get background about who it is and why why they're talking and where they're talking. I'm like, just just do the interview. Have it flow so that there's a lead up into it that I don't need 10 minutes of explanation about who you're talking to and why you're talking to them. And it just really wasn't for me. I'm glad I got it for free. All right, so for my in-progresses, um, I made Big Progress on Heart of Europe by Peter Wilson this month. Um, this is a personal audiobook I've been working on for a while now. I made 16% progress. I've got an hour and something left. I am so close to finishing it, I can taste it. Um, it's a history of the Holy Roman Empire. 
I don't really know how I feel about it at this point now that I'm almost done with it. I feel like it could have either been a lot of a series of smaller books or it needed to be structured a little differently for me to really be engaged. But I'm, I will be so thrilled when I finish this book. It'll probably be in the September wrap up. Next, Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dan Gibbons. Um, I made 15% progress this month, which is pretty darn good for myself. I haven't been reading as much, so making even that little bit of progress makes me happy. And if you want to see, so that is how far I am right now. So I'm up like what, a quarter, 30% of the way in I think is what I, where I am. But yeah, I am really enjoying it. It is really weird for me. Um, I've never really read a whole lot of comic books. I did read manga as a kid, but manga and this are very different. Or at least the mangas I read were very different. Um, so I'm getting used to the style, but I do prefer reading it this way than I did trying to do it as an ebook. All right, next. Corbin Strike Book 3, Career of Evil. Um, so far, I made 18% progress. I am not super far, as you can see. Um, this, this series suffers from the JK Rowling problem where each book gets successively longer for no apparent reason. It's like, JK Rowling, I really enjoy some of your books, but we really need to break your work process or make you more succinct. Um, this was one where there is also for this series, I should have said at the beginning, um, there is a, I believe it was a BBC series. You can get it on Cinemax here in the US called CB Strike, where they did two or three parters based on the three books that were out at the time. So it ends with this one. And to me, the television adaptation of this book is better than the actual book. But in this one, um, following the success of Strike after the Silkworm and Cuckoo's Calling, um, someone sends a leg to Robin, who has now become a partner in the firm or in the detective agency. Or not necessarily a partner, but she she has been promoted from secretary to um, private detective. And someone sends her a leg. And so they spend the whole book trying to track down who sent this leg, why they sent it and trying to keep Robin safe. You find out a lot more about Robin's backstory in this book. Um, but for me, there was a lot of extra detail in this book that could have been cut out, that the show cut out that made me really happy. All right, next, Lethal White. I am doing this one as an audiobook. I do have all of these books as audiobooks as well as actual books. Um, I'm listening to this one as an audiobook because I can't stand most of this one. This is my least favorite of all of the Cormoran Strike series, mainly because it's, what, 600 and something pages? So this is a first edition U.S. printing. Um, but it's 647 pages. And there's two separate kind of mystery lines that are going on in here. And I didn't give a crud about either of them. The murder doesn't happen until over halfway through. So they spend half the book running around trying to figure out if someone's been murdered and then someone gets murdered and it's wrapped up fairly quickly. It focuses a lot more on Strike and Robin as people, less on the mystery. I wish they could have cut it and just focused on the mystery. We will see how Troubled Blood goes. I'm hoping Troubled Blood will be a little bit better, but I'm listening to this as an audiobook because it's easier for me to get through if I listen to it as opposed to trying to read it. Because if I read it, I just get grumpy and quit. Um, next, The Conductors by Nicole Glover. This I have as an e-galley from NetGalley. I made 9% progress this month. I'm going to have to get this one done in the next few days. My loan from NetGalley is almost up, so I've got to really power through it in the coming days. So that one will move to the top of my list, and like Career of Evil will get pushed to the side. Um, next, Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. I made 26% progress this month. Whoop, whoop. Um, but it did go back to the library again. I'm doing this as an audiobook. This one is one where it's easy to get through, but it's kind of interesting to see where the emphasis is put because I have the musical in my head 
And when you're thinking about how quickly we moved through a lot of the things that were covered in the musical, and now we're at a point where I'm just like, oh my god, so much detail. But it still is really interesting about a part of history I don't really know that well. So I'm, I'm really happy to be learning about it. Um, the next books are the books I made no progress on this week, or this month. <coughs> With this, I'm sure no one is surprised. Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. It's a library ebook. Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Library ebook. And Lord Fowl's Bane by Stephen R. Donaldson. No progress is a personal ebook. My next books are on deck. Um, one of them I'm going to have to prioritize. The other two, we'll get to them when we get to them, are e arcs, courtesy of NetGalley. So we have The Long Dark Road by P.R. Black, which is a galley. Um, the Devil in the, the Dark Water by Stuart Turton, which I'm super excited for because I really, really enjoyed The Seven and a Half Lives of Evelyn Hardcastle. So I'm really, really hoping I will enjoy The Devil in the Dark Water. And Untold Mayhem, which is an e-galley audiobook by Mark Tulling, which is a collection of short stories, horror short stories set in quarantine. So looking at that, let me need my pen. So that is five red. Nine in progress, three on deck. Let's see. That's ten. That's eleven. Twenty. And 88% progress, which to be fair, two of the books that I made progress on, Heart, Heart of Europe and Alexander Hamilton, are huge books. So 16% progress in Heart of Europe is like five hours of reading, which is amazing. So hopefully I will have some more progress to share with you all next month. Please do remember to like and subscribe, comment down below if you agree or disagree with any of my takes or have any recommendations of things I should be reading or thinking about reading. And with that, I will see you all in another video. Bye!